Welcome in One Nation to another episode of A Thing or Two About A Thing or Two. TJ Winger here with you, joined today by grad assistant Aaron Farina. Aaron, thank you for taking the time to join me today. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Well, Aaron, former volleyball player here at the University of Lynchburg, now turned grad assistant. Let's start by talking about your undergrad. What did you study? I studied health promotion at undergrad. And now what are you studying for your master's? Public health. Got you. So two very similar things. Yes. Got you. What do you hope to do with that? those two degrees? Um, you know, everybody asks me that question, and sure. I feel like I have a lot of options in my mind. Um, I'm really interested in nonprofit work. That's what I did for the majority of my internship in undergrad, and I loved it. Um, so I'm kind of just seeing where it takes me. <laughs> Keeping all doors open. Yep. Never a bad thing. So part of the reason I wanted to have you on is because you were somebody who worked within the athletics organization while you were a student here and, of course, playing volleyball. Can you kind of talk about what first led you into working with the athletics department? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, obviously, like, I came here as a freshman to play volleyball, and when you're a student athlete, you kind of grow a uh, significant relationship with the support staff for the athletic department, and I kind of just got an interest in photography and was like, hey, can I, like, try it out and just see if I like it and if I'm good at it and things kind of just fell into place from there. So let me ask you, why photography? Um, I'm not really sure, honestly. I, I kind of just got into it and I've always been, I, I've played numerous sports growing up, you know, and so I've always had like a good understanding of different sports and kind of how the game is supposed to look from that kind of perspective and I kind of just wanted to get into it randomly and come to find out that I was talking about it I think with my mom or something she was like you love to take pictures when you were little and I was like (laughs) oh interesting so I guess I've kind of been into it for a while and just forgot about it moms always know right that's amazing (laughs) so you gained a lot of experience while you were an undergrad and now you're working as a grad assistant and you do just about a little bit of everything, some graphic design, you'll obviously do a lot of photography, some videography with LHSN, you've called games with LHSN. How do you think all that real world experience you had while you were undergrad puts you in a position now but then also down the line to go into whatever field it is and just be able to you know, produce results? Um, I think that it gives me a really wide skill set, which is always awesome kind of for anything, and especially for someone like me who doesn't know exactly what they want to do or what route they want to take in a specific field. It gives me a lot of options, and it makes me really marketable in a lot of different ways. So I have to ask, as someone who's worked with me calling games, what's your favorite thing you've done? Which area have you enjoyed working in the most? Calling games, broadcast, uh, cameras, you know, photography, videography. Let me hear it. I mean, I don't want to hurt your feelings or anything, uh, but yeah, I mean, my, anyway. my my true passion is photography. I mean, I've I've actually dove into a little bit more of the video side um, last year and into this year, obviously with uh, creating like the motion graphics sure. that we've been producing and stuff like that, and I really enjoy it. Um, I've I really enjoyed uh, working a camera at the soccer game this year. Um, I mean, I, I really do love all of it, but I mean, photography is the thing that I'm always going to pick first if I can. Okay, well, you know, <laughs> feelings only hurt a little bit. But you know, it's actually, let's take the opportunity to kind of talk about those motion graphics and something hopefully, you know, our Hornets fan base have enjoyed seeing. It's a different thing, and it was just something that I pitched when I first got hired, and everybody kind of liked it, but I was like, okay, well, now we have to, like, do it. And fortunately enough, I have you, and you've done a fantastic job with it, and kind of give me the idea for, after it was said and spoken, how you've molded it into, essentially, your child in a lot of ways. Yeah, and I mean, it's it's really funny that you say that, because before we had, like, talked about it as a sports information group, I had mentioned a similar thing to Mark over the summer, and so it was really Great cool, minds. like, alive, right? <laughs> it was really cool, like, coming in, and we were kind of all on the same page on that aspect, and, like, we have the opportunity to do something really different and be creative about it, and we tried it, and luckily it worked out really well. Um, it was, it, it's been really fun trying to, like, develop this concept. You know, there have been some bugs with it. Like, I mean, you saw me yesterday in the office, and I was basically cursing this computer. Um, but, uh, I mean, it's been really fun, and uh, getting the athletes into it has been 
it, it's been a really cool thing. Like, I know that some people at first were kind of disappointed that we weren't going to do, like, our traditional promo photos and things like that. But once they saw, like, kind of the idea we were going for, they've been able to be really personable about it, and they've gotten really into it. And I think that people are really catching on to the idea, and it's allowing people to be more creative and show kind of more of the personalities of our athletes, like getting to know them a little bit better, even if it's just in a three to five second frame, you know? Yeah, and if you're listening to this and you haven't seen our social media, definitely go check it out, because I mean, a lot of sports have gotten into it. You have some who are just flashing the jersey, you know, flexing their guns, you know, that's cool, whatever. But then you have some, like tennis yesterday was in here, and they were using their rackets as skillets, making omelets, like that is, that is awesome. That's kind of the whole point behind something like this. So I'm glad that you have taken with it and run with it in the direction that you have. So let's talk about this GA experience, especially the time balance part of it, because I don't have a master's, but I can imagine that's rather time consuming. And I do know you do a lot of work here in the department. So what's <laughs> it like trying to juggle that balance between the two? Um, I mean, it's a lot. And, you know, I think that because I was a student athlete having to balance sports and school kind of set me up really well for it. I mean, it's really hard to be a student athlete here if you're not diligent about your time. Um, And so I think that coming off of a really strict schedule my entire time in undergrad, like basically straight into my graduate assistantship here has really done well for me. Um, And it has been a like it it hasn't been too much of a change for me in that like on the time side aspect well I'm glad you said that because that leads perfectly into what I want to ask you next so that time management side that you're dealing with now how does that compare to when you were an athlete and a student here at Lynchburg it's incredibly similar and you know I mean I think that for the faculty that work in the athletic department versus the students that are athletes um your your day is always planned out with something, you know. I mean, as somebody who's on the staff, you know, we've got staff meetings, I've got emails to respond to, I've got projects that I need to do, whether it's graphics, photography related, whatever, et cetera. And then on top of that, like game days and stuff like that. Whereas versus being a student athlete, you've got your morning lifts, you've got your classes, you've got whatever you're doing for your lunch period you've got study halls you've got practice days or game days and then team bonding so and there are so many other things that are added to your schedule kind of randomly or planned ahead for the season Um, I mean it's incredibly similar it's just the little details are different sure I hear the two things that (laughs) professors tote about and brag about with uh, Lynchburg the most and students like the most is like the opportunity to get reward experience, which we've talked about, and then small class sizes, which I feel like they go hand in hand. So tell me your perspective on having that smaller class size, more of a community feel. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I know for me, when I was an undergrad, the smaller class sizes were extremely helpful, you know, like being able to have a personal relationship with your professors, like if you're struggling, if you need help, or if you need extra attention with this, that, or the other. And like, I mean, for someone like me, like after high school coming into college, like I was not that interested in school, you know, like I, it was just, I was like, I wasn't interested in like the gen ed aspect of it. Like the, it, it just, it wasn't what I wanted to do I was like if I'm not super interested in it it kind of just like it goes over my head and like uh, I just don't really care kind of way which is so bad to say but I mean it was true and I mean with that like the smaller class sizes like building personal relationships with your professors and your classmates and stuff like that it keeps you more engaged and it makes it really hard to kind of slack off or fall behind or disengage from the your academic side no doubt. All right, I got one final funny question in my eyes. <laughs> Favorite person in the athletics department to work with? Ready, set, go. There is a correct answer. You're talking. <laughs> there is a correct. Well, the kind of the correct answer is going to be TJ. Yes. <laughs> Obviously. Yes. Um. <laughs> I, the, I mean, it's funny. Like, there are so many people that I like working with in this department for a lot of different reasons. Um. I mean, obviously, like I work a lot with you. I work a lot with Mark Robertson and. Like, I share office space with both of you guys, so it's yeah. hard not to say one of you all. But uh, everybody that I've worked with, whether it's a coach or a student athlete or, like, somebody else on the staff, like, I've always had a really good time working with. 
For sure. Maybe that's an unfair question, <laughs> given the setting here. But what about a favorite professor or, or, or something along those lines? My favorite professor at Lynchburg was Dr. Lapani. He's an English professor and is still to this day, I'm pretty sure, heartbroken that I was not an English major. But he still says hi to me every time he sees me on campus, asks how I'm doing. Like, he's, he's a great guy. That's awesome. Well, Aaron, thank you so much for giving me some time today. I appreciate it having you on the pod. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. That's going to bring it close to this episode of A Thing or Two, About a Thing or Two. Be sure to check in next week for a new episode. But until then, we are signing off.